So um, as the Berlin conference said, most of the symptoms of mild traumatic brain injury or concussion typically resolve early on after the concussion, but some um, symptoms last, you know, two to four weeks on, in general or more. Um, and the physical um, symptoms of concussion could include headaches, nausea, loss of balance, um, disturbed sleep, increased fatigue, um, which are two of the most common things that occur after a traumatic brain injury, uh, especially a mild traumatic brain injury. We see a lot of individuals with sleep difficulties, um, both initiating sleep and staying asleep, um, different issues with vision difficulties, um, sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise, um, impaired hearing can occur as a result of a concussion, dizziness, um, other neurological abnormalities such as seizures could occur. Um, and then another physical um, symptom of concussion could be numbness. Um, different cognitive um, symptoms also include impaired judgment, um, significant deficits to attention concentration, lack of memory for events that occur immediately before the concussion or immediately after the concussion. Um, you don't see a long-term um, post-traumatic amnesia or uh, pre-traumatic amnesia, but it, you do see um, some instances of individuals forgetting immediate um, events prior to and after a concussion. Um, sometimes there's difficulty forming new memories or retrieving other older memories. Um, there's difficulty with learning that may occur, um, which is why we see a lot of return, not just return to sports anymore, but we're seeing a lot of return to school programs for individuals uh, with concussion that are um, starting to be developed and are being developed um, similar to the Neuron Up um, cognitive rehabilitation programs. We're seeing a lot of that for school-aged children who are returning um, after a concussion to school and need additional assistance, um, length, additional time in classes, additional time to take um, tests and things like that. Um, we see a lot of difficulty with um, processing speed early on after a concussion. And then sometimes um, we even see some difficulties with executive functioning. A lot of individuals who have had a concussion um, experience different problems with anger management and um, different types of social situations that just become too overwhelming um, while um, they're recovering from their mild traumatic brain injury, um, which then also leads into um, the, the emotional difficulties after a traumatic brain injury of the mild type or a concussion, which could include anxiety. Depression is extremely common after a concussion. Um, oftentimes, people that don't even know they've had a concussion will experience the fatigue and the depression, and that's actually what leads them back to diagnosis of a mild traumatic brain injury at some point is they're often um, really debilitated with the depression and the fatigue and go to be treated for that and realize that over a period of time they must, they had a concussion that they were not aware of. Um, and then lastly, the different behavioral type symptoms include, as I said, agitation, irritability, aggression, impulsivity, um, and um, typically 10 to 15% of, of people that have had a concussion experience persistent symptoms um, in the long term after their concussion. So it's not something that, as the Berlin Conference suggested, it occurs for a limited time and dissipates quickly. We do see 10 to 15% of these individuals who have long persistent symptoms Specifically, the most common are the depression and the fatigue occurring after um, the brain injury. Um, we're seeing a lot more research coming out um, showing that there are differences between 
men and women with regard to how they are recovering after a concussion. Um, for example, women um, tend to report concussions more often than men. Um, they're more likely to report more significant symptoms than men, and their symptoms seem to persist a lot longer than men's. Um, and there's some speculation into the warrior status and um, the machismo behind um, men underreporting, but typically women are more likely to report, they're likely to report more symptoms and more severe symptoms that last longer than men's symptoms. Um, the theory is that also women's necks are not as strong as men's necks. So we see a lot more of those acceleration, deceleration injuries in women. Um, and it also allows for more rotational types of injuries uh, where the brain is moving within the skull and causing um, frontal and temporal um, injuries due to the bony prominences again within the skull. Um, a lot of research um, on brain injury um, is done in men um, because men are more likely to incur a traumatic brain injury than women. Um, it basically, up until recently, most of the literature um, did not look at gender specific outcomes, but a recent shift um, due to organizations like Pink Concussions, um, the American Congress of Rehabilitation uh, Women's Special Task Force, and other individuals throughout academia worldwide have really been focusing on looking at the implications of gender and sex on um, the different type of treatments, the severity, um, and specifically looking at differences between men and women with regard to mild traumatic brain injuries. There's a lot more literature out there right now looking at gender differences. So what do we do to assess and treat different types of mild traumatic brain injury? Um, basically, you could do different neuropsychological evaluations. Um, they're absolutely invaluable um, in determining symptom causation. Um, they should be considered absolutely necessary if someone is dealing with post-concussive syndrome, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, neuropsychologists basically can provide um, early interventions. They can recommend different types of therapy. They can build on strengths that the individual already or has preserved and try to ameliorate the weaknesses that are occurring due to the mild traumatic brain injury. Um, they can monitor return to work, return to school, return to play, and then they can also um, treat the emotional difficulties um, with regard to any of the recovery problems that are existing and can uh, appropriately refer for sleep and other types of difficulties that may be occurring as well. And as with all dramatic brain injury, it is extremely important to time the treatment appropriately. The earlier the intervention, the better the outcomes. So just a little bit of um, research I wanna share with you guys, uh, and then we will open up to questions. Um, this is a study that my colleagues and I had done out of Stanford, and we went through 1,096 studies. Um, and took a look at the differences with regard to um, post-traumatic, post-concussion syndrome after um, mild traumatic brain injury. And we showed um, a statistically significant decrease in post-concussive symptoms and post-concussive syndrome after individuals were engaged in physical exercise compared to a control group of individuals or compared to control groups of individuals who did not exercise after a concussion. Um, physical exercise also produced significant decreases in the PCSS score, which is the post-concussive symptom survey. 
And um, it also, um, we looked at different randomized control trials and um, saw that a subgroup of meta-analyses that we did, um, we found a reduction in symptomatology for individuals that were engaging in exercise after um, concussion. And we saw that adolescents and adults with concussions um, were reporting less symptoms fewer days after the concussion based on um, whether or not they were engaged in exercise after the injury. Um, hang on, slide. Here we go. Um, this further um, shows that um, we see dig statistically significant, which is what these black diamonds are, um, decreases in post-concussive scores after individuals are engaged in physical exercise compared to the control group um, of patients with concussion who are not engaging in exercise. And we're, that's, we're not just seeing this in local studies, but this is common across all of the different studies that we looked at. And of the over a thousand articles that we screened, we were able to pull out um, 14 specific studies which included five randomized controlled trials, a propensity matching study, and then three cohort studies, um, and then five pre-post studies as well. And all of them are showing pretty significant differences in individuals um, who are engaging in exercise after um, their injuries. One more on this one, I believe. Yes. Um, so, some improvements were also seen with regard to impact scores, um, which is a common um, computerized assessment um, that's used after uh, concussion. Um, it's a measure that investigates um, the different neuropsychological um, impairments, um, as well as some physical and functioning impairments. Um, and we saw that, again, within this group, um, the light and moderate intensity workouts were, um, we were seeing much improved scores on their impact scores. Um, and um, however, on the flip side, people that were engaged in very high intensity type workouts, we were seeing a decrease in memory scores. So, a little bit of exercise is good. Too much is too much. So um, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done with regard to exercise, but we are seeing the absolute antithesis of what used to be prescribed as the normal treatment after a concussion where go in a dark room, don't engage, um, you know, no computer, no TV, no anything. Um, and, you know, wake everybody wake them up after every two hours kind of thing we're seeing that, that actually increases depression it increases um anxiety it's increasing a lot of the symptomatology and making the symptoms um that are reported a lot worse and last a lot longer um so now it's get the individual engaged in an aerobic activity um let them sleep to help ameliorate the fatigue um, if they are able to sleep and they're not having engagement um, issues to get to sleep or to stay asleep after their concussion. Um, so we are seeing a complete 180 um, with regard to concussion treatment based on a lot of these studies that are out there now, which is great. Um, lastly, um, again, this is a uh, similar meta-analysis that um, we had done um, and saw significant differences, again, with regard to activity versus rest um, for individuals after a concussion. And we're seeing those with activity are doing significantly better than those who are um, prescribed rest. Um, McKeever and Schatz did this study looking at um, a variety of different um, 
they did a meta analysis also looking at post concussion assessment schedules. And basically they found that there's little to no agreement in the schedule of serial testing uh, to evaluate the different uh, symptoms or the resolution of symptoms after a concussion, um, that there's no conformity to the different types of neuropsychological procedures that are used. There's no clear gold standard of assessment, treatment, length, time, measures, any of the above. And they suggested that serious study needs to go into um, really coming up with a gold standard um, clinical practice guideline for individuals after mild traumatic brain injury because it's clearly lacking. Um, As I mentioned um, before, post-concussive syndrome is um, not very common after mild traumatic brain injury. It occurs in 10 to 15% of the individuals who incur a mild traumatic brain injury. Um, their persistent symptoms typically last weeks or months after their mild traumatic brain injury. Um, typically, it's still debated what causes post-traumatic or post-concussion syndrome or PCS. Um, it includes things like poor um, early intervention, delay in seeking medical attention or seeking an intervention, um, allowing other factors um, to influence the behavior, um, increased risk factors um, for which include like substance use or alcohol use after a mild traumatic brain injury to help self-medicate. Oftentimes people will start drinking or taking drugs and that impacts um, their ability to recover after a mild traumatic brain injury as well. Um, other uh, risk factors for post-concussive syndrome incur ongoing headaches, uh, persistent dizziness, persistent nausea, increased uh, post-traumatic amnesia over an hour. Um, if you are female, if you are over age 40, you're more likely uh, than males and individuals under age 40 to incur post-concussive syndrome. If you've had a history of substance abuse in the past, you're more likely to have post-concussion syndrome or lingering effects of a mild traumatic brain injury. We see Individuals with lower socioeconomic status often uh, reporting higher levels of post-concussion syndrome. And um, whether or not the mild traumatic brain injury was a result of a traumatic event, such as um, child abuse or domestic partner violence, um, those often times um, result in post-concussion syndrome and a lack of uh, resolution of symptoms as well. Um, we really want to get to, as I said earlier, and as uh, research has shown, we want to get to an early diagnosis. Um, it should be multidisciplinary. It should be based on, uh, it should be symptom focused, and it should be um, with the goals of providing compensatory strategies and restoring function. Um, and some of the best folks to do that, as I said, are neuropsychologists and multidisciplinary teams of rehabilitation um, providers. Um, some of the complications that we see with regard to post-concussive syndrome is somatization and secondary gain. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in um, the next slide. Um, there was a great study that Silver did um, looking at somatic, uh, look at looking at um, malingering and different reasons why we may see more post-concussive syndrome in some individuals than others. Um, and then other complications that we see could include second impact syndrome, where someone has a second or even a third concussion before their first concussion has healed. Um, which often um, leads to more severe type of an injury. Um, it's rare, but it is a possible fatal condition. If you are injured a second time prior to your first uh, mild traumatic brain injury healing, it could actually exacerbate the symptoms and uh, the severity of the injury as well. Um, 
and um, another um, up and coming area of research is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and it's a rare but progressive uh, degenerative disorder that has been shown to be associated with diffuse axonal injury. Um, and it causes different types of problems with uh, chemicals in your brain, such as tau, um, and that can in turn cause chronic inflammation. Um, researchers are working on a way to be able to identify um, uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy in living individuals. However, that has not been done yet. It's currently um, only uh, discovered upon autopsy after someone has uh, died after an injury. And last but not least, um, as I said, Silver did this awesome study um, looking at the different contributions to um, symptoms after concussion. And he found that this here is a um, model for understanding the different interactions. And he found that people may not be exaggerating or malingering after a concussion. Um, after the initial effect, people often don't take into account normal psychiatric symptoms or other common psychological mechanisms such as stress, um, stereotypes, um, threats, anger, revenge, loss of um, fear of loss of self um, and um, other types of symptoms that are normal um, that may be influencing individuals' um, symptomatology after their concussion. Um, different um, interventions that minimize the symptoms of concussion includes, include optimizing the patient's expectations, treating their depression, anxiety, or post-traumatic stress disorder, um, minimizing the stereotype threats, um, addressing the feelings of anger, the loss aversion, and um, cheating, and then also considering um, the effect that any sort of secondary gain or money may have on the individual's behavior after the traumatic brain injury, but that individuals may not be malingering or exaggerating their symptoms. They just might have real honest to goodness psychological issues that are going on after their mild traumatic brain injury, which increases their likelihood of ongoing symptoms and potential post-concussive syndrome. And with that, I just want to say thank you. And we will open up.